Hi everybody, once again, it's Heath, Riso Hudson Certified Teacher of the Enneagram and author of Becoming Your True You, God, the Enneagram, and Your Unique Purpose. Speaking of purpose, let's talk about careers for Enneagram 7s. I am a 7, so I know a little bit about this topic. So let's dive right in. What career is best or what kinds of careers are best for Enneagram 7s? The choices are as wide ranging as sevens themselves. Sevens tend to seek variety and excitement. So accounting is probably out. Now, maybe not. Maybe there is a seven in the world who finds crunching numbers just amazingly satisfying and exciting and full of variety. Um, and in that case, that's where the seven would be. But. I do want to say that a simple list of you know good jobs for sevens that I've seen on the internet so frequently just will not cut the mustard. There's way more to it than that. <clears throat> and this list of famous sevens will demonstrate that fact. Benjamin Franklin, John F. Kennedy, Steve Jobs, Malcolm Forbes, Robin Williams, Mozart, Scarlett O'Hara from Gone with the Wind. That's a ton of variety, right? I mean, there are politicians in here. Um, that's not my idea of excitement at all. I mean, I can't imagine anything more boring than sitting and reading a 400-page bill, uh, or even a 200-page one, for that matter. But again, there are some people who do find that exciting or, um, or you know, fulfilling in some way. So. <clears throat> Note two of those names, right? Steve Jobs and Malcolm Forbes. And then we're also going to include Sir Richard Branson, who the Enneagram world is fairly certain is an Enneagram 7, probably with an 8 wing. Sevens can have a real entrepreneurial bent, right? They want to create things. They have a lot of innovative ideas and they want to exert their own independence, right? That is me to a T. That's why I avoided working for the man for many, many years, but we'll get to that in a minute. So which kind of seven are you? That's really important to know and to factor in. What is your dominant instinct of the social, sexual, and self-preservation main instincts that all human beings have because that's going to flavor how you show up in the world as a seven. Okay, so we're going to look at each one of those. <clears throat> the social sevens are not as materialistic as the other two types. And in fact, Beatrice Chestnut calls them in her book, The Complete Enneagram, the counter type. Okay, they're more focused on um, causes all right, then the other two types tend to be. And they sense that cardinal sin of gluttony that sevens struggle with. And they really fight against it. And they're people who are willing to, you know, sacrifice what they want for the greater good, more so than other sevens usually are able to do. So sevens with um, a social dominant instinct are usually going to end up being in, you know, faith based ministries or organizations, nonprofits, and you know, different kinds of social causes. I know one social seven who's a pastor. I know another social seven who worked with refugees for years. And again, because I'm a seven, I'm guessing that this version of seven is the one that's most likely to be in politics because it's a cause, right? It's something that people feel like they need to um, commit to and sacrifice for um, for the greater good. Okay, so they're also probably really good at delegating the boring parts of being a politician, like reading the 400 page bill, right? That's what interns are for. So then we have the sexual sevens, and those people are really looking for the juice wherever it can be found. They're very interested in anything that's new and exciting. They can be more impulsive than the other kinds of sevens. And they tend to have a rosy, aka unrealistic, um, version of the world. That's what they see. And they can get that idealistic notion um, confused with reality, which can be a problem when reality crashes in, as it does. Um, so they're, um, they're more imaginers than doers. So again, sevens have all kinds of 
new ideas constantly being generated in their heads. So they'll come up with a cool idea and then they'll leave it to someone else to execute that idea. And then they'll move on to the next interesting thing. And I think that startups and startup incubators are full of sexual sevens. I'm sure of it. And these are the sevens who are likely to be, you know, the, the, globe-trotting adventure and thrill seekers, the adrenaline junkies, the National Geographic wildlife photographers of the world. And then finally come, we come to the self-preservation sevens, and that's what I am. Um, so they're more practical and pragmatic, right? They want to make sure that they have the resources that they need to be comfortable. Sex, uh, self press sevens tend to want to build a nice little nest around themselves with all of the, the comfort and the beautiful things that will give them joy. So they um, are more materialistic than the other two types and I can vouch for that, uh, although I'm working on it. And they're also often more business oriented than other sevens. They're usually really good at networking, which I'm not, um, and that's a bummer because I'm actually an introvert, although you may not be able to tell that. Um, I'm an INFJ, which is the most extroverted introvert, uh, according to Myers-Briggs, and that's a whole other discussion. In fact, I think I'm going to have a video sometime about um, anomalous sevens because that can really lead to some mistyping problems because it's assumed that sevens are always extroverts. <clears throat> And that's just not the case. All right, so anyway, those are the three main kinds of um, sevens. And so which one of those instincts dominates in you is really going to have a determining factor on which jobs fit you better or that you will enjoy more. Um, so let's talk about some of the jobs I've had. And this is not even a complete list. I um, wrote a blog post about my whole crazy non-career journey and you can see that in the um, the notes. I'll put a link to that blog post if you want to read more about that. But I've had all kinds of um, temp office jobs. I've been a housekeeper. Blech. I've been a high school French teacher. I've been a freelance journalist. I've been an SAT prep tutor. Um, I've done media relations, which is actually similar to what I do right now. I write for a media relations agency. And I've done data entry. And I've been an assistant to a CFO. All kinds of things. And again, that was because for so many years I was trying to not work for the man because I'm a creative as well. So that's a whole other layer to bring into sevenness that if you're someone who produces and I'm a writer primarily, uh, then you you know have kind of this artistic vision and you want that to succeed and for years for me that was screenwriting um and again the blog post explains more about how that whole journey went and um so i wasn't you know really ever interested in um, a full-time job um because again that's the seventh thing i was gonna be trapped by it etc so um Ultimately, I realized all of this um, non-career stuff that I was doing was really not paying the bills very well. So I um, had to change my tune. But my mother is also a self-preservation seven. She, for the bulk of her career, was a teacher. Okay, so that's a very stable career, right? And you tend to teach the same thing every year. So it is possible to find something that you really enjoy as a seven and, and be able to stick with it. But then after she was a teacher, she transitioned to working for child protective services. Okay. That's not a fun job. That's not all thrills and giggles. That's hard. That's dealing with some really raw and intense stuff of life. That's very sad. So that's another uh, little insight for you, especially for those who aren't sevens and who are watching this, that sevens aren't always just, you know, flighty and happy and, and uh, doing exciting things. Sometimes they're able to really buckle down and do the hard stuff of life, um, particularly if it's going to serve other people. Okay. So, uh, What's next? Um, well, just to say that so there's really no such thing as an Enneagram type seven career or you know list of jobs that you should do or that you can do. You know, yes, sevens are less likely to do work that doesn't involve contact with people. Although again, again, because I'm an introvert, 
even though I'm a seven. Um, I love working from home and the one great thing about this whole quarantine is that I get to work from home by myself and no one bothers me and I can just do my own thing. So again, I'm a little bit of an anomaly, but maybe some other sevens will um, identify with that. So if so, leave a comment. I'd love to hear about that. And um, anyway, um, Sevens are, you know, again, less likely to do things that are super detail oriented, like accounting, for instance, or, you know, insurance work, that kind of stuff. Um, but again, if the seven finds that enjoyable and exciting and engaging, then that's what they're going to end up doing. So really in the quest to find meaningful work or work that you can enjoy, it really comes down to the level of development for me. And that's a concept by Riso and Hudson. And if you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you familiarize yourself with it because it really explains the vertical progression of growth for each one of the types. And if you are at a certain level in your sevenness, then um, you are going to want to seek out things that are easy and that are fun for you. But really what that ends up doing ultimately is just coddling your own personality, your own false self and propping it up when really what I want to get to is using the Enneagram as a growth tool, right? So that as you become aware of your own patterns, you can get more clarity, you can become more present to life, and then it doesn't matter what you do. You can do anything because you're alive in that moment and you're present to it and it's okay and you don't have to be trying to find something happy or exciting or something to look forward to because you are here now. And that is the goal. And I confess that I'm not always there, of course, but that's really what I'm shooting for. And that's what I hope you will shoot for also in your life. And I am proof that you can survive just about any job. I mean, most of these jobs that I talked about today, I did not enjoy. And some of them I did for years. So part of that is my self prez. Um, at work and some of it too is that progressive um, awareness and inner transformation that leads you up those levels of development. So I know that's a little bit different than what most people talk about when they talk about career types for a specific type, but I just wanted to offer you a different um, opinion and perspective about what it's like to work with your type in the world. All right, so I wanna say, you know, if you like this video, please like it. If you didn't like it, feel free to hit that little thumbs down, but then please tell me in the comments why you didn't like it so that I can get better at doing this, so that I can give you guys the stuff that you really wanna see, okay? And then also, I just, uh, in my last video, talked about a um, book giveaway that I'm doing, and I'm doing it for one more week. The, it's open for one more week, so go ahead and look at my last video in the notes, and you'll see how to enter. It's very simple. It'll take you like three minutes. So um, yeah, good luck on that, and subscribe if you would like more information on the Enneagram, and especially with regard to my Enneagram book review series. All right, you guys. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.